I'm in the process of writing my second book and um, I was looking through my hard drive and looking at all the old episodes and recipes and stuff that I'm going to put in the, in the book and I came across this one and for some reason I never edited it. It's from two years ago, it's from January 2021 and um, yeah, I thought, well, the recipe's good. The only real difference between this and my episodes now is that I didn't have a second camera and the camera wasn't quite as good. Um, wasn't shot in 4K, but look, you get the idea. Anyway, let's get into it. Boy. Welcome back to Fire to Fork. My name's Harry, his name's Fred, and this is a discus that Fred found on the beach. Weird, right? Today we're going to be cooking up a really bloody tasty breakfast. Uh, although it is about five in the afternoon, so it's definitely not breakfast time. Uh, first things first, you know the drill. Awning, gear out, fire lit. Back in a sec. Oh, and just a reminder, somewhere in this episode there is a code word and you can win a copy of my book. Comment the code word down below. So, let's start with the meal. First step, potatoes. A shallot, or as in, they'd say in America, shallot. Um, some spuds. Now, you want to use a kind of a waxy white spud that's ideal for this because we're making a potato hash. So, as you probably tell by the title. Um, grate this and we're going to grate that, put them all into a ball, see how we go. Now why did I use a shallot as opposed to an onion? Um, now I know some of you see a shallot as a $5 circumcision, aka a ripoff. Uh, that is not the case, they are just a lot sort of gentler and nicer and I just like the flavour more. So yeah, and you grate them as well, don't, don't have to chop them up in this circumstance. So you don't need to squeeze all the water out of this, you'll get a lot out. Okay, that hasn't quite covered the bottom of the pan, so a little bit more. Bit of olive oil. Some salt and pepper. With the lid off the pepper. Hopefully my audio hasn't gone to shit, because I just realised that my fluffy guy has fallen off. Okay, now I'm going to even that out nicely, press it into the edges, and we're going to get it on the heat. So, to get it on the heat, my new toy. A couple of episodes ago I said I wasn't going to talk about gear as much, I have reneged on that, uh, because it turns out that it was the vocal minority who wanted me to stop talking about it, and most people are desperate for me to continue to talk about it. Um, so, uh, it's from Osbry, it's um, the link in the gear page. I've only used it a handful of times. Uh, initial impressions are that it's awesome. When you first use it, if you only put heat in a certain spot, due to the nature of it, it will warp up in that spot. Um, a thick ring here, thin, thin, um, mesh in the middle means it yeah it will warp because these expand and the thick ring doesn't uh, it's kind of the nature of this design there's not a lot you can do about it I haven't found it annoying at all uh, tricky is just to have it on a bigger fire uh, but yeah I haven't found it to be debilitating in any way it's very stable all right a little bit of butter in the corners, just on the edges. That will sort of help crisp up the edges apparently. I haven't done this technique before, but let's see if it works. Uh, also, first impressions on impressions on the new knife. 
the Miles Briar is that it's as sharp, as reliable as the big cleaver, but a bit easier to use. Beautiful knife. Um, the cleaver you can definitely use uh, for more stuff purely because of its size, but if you want an easier to use knife, so if you've got someone who's not as comfortable with the bigger knife, this is just fantastic. With As with the other knife, you need to dry it. It's very high carbon steel. As a result, it holds an edge for ages, but it will rust if you look at it wet. So uh, that's the same with the cleaver. That's just, that's what you get with a high carbon steel knife, uh, but it's not like a Japanese knife where it's super soft and will um, crack and that kind of stuff. Um, well, not, no, sorry, not crack, but blunt quickly. This will hold an edge for bloody ages. All right, this is looking like it's pretty well, nearly crispy underneath. It's starting to get a little bit brown. So, before it's fully browned, I've got this on lots of heat, by the way. Before it's fully browned, I want to just add a little bit of bacon to the side for, I think, relatively obvious reasons. Bacon's freaking delicious. Oh great, there's a 79 series pulling up while I'm filming. And my dog's chasing him. This is good. Alright, I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay, crisis averted. Oh. How's this looking? Yep, that is pretty well perfectly done underneath. So I reckon we can flip this guy over now. Flipping this over neatly is very difficult. What I'd usually recommend is a plate uh, to do this, but a bit of a camp oven will work perfectly well. So what I'm gonna do is chuck that on there, flip, and then slide it back in. Oh no! I lost a bit of bacon. That's tragedy. That's a tragedy. These bits of bacon are really stupidly small. I haven't bought this brand before, but like... That's really very, very small bit. And it's not ideal for a grill. I'm just going to overdo the bacon just in case I lose some more. Now I'm going to crack some eggs on top of this hash now. Um, usually you'd put a lid on it, but I reckon we've got enough time where we can just leave them on there and they'll cook. Nah, there's no heat on top. I'm going to do this properly. Camp oven lid. Bit of heat. I reckon we're looking pretty good here. This bacon's ready to come off. And quickly prep the final ingredient. Usually I sprinkle some green stuff on top of my um, my meals, and the reason for that is it's more, it looks more appetizing and looks healthier. But if you get multi-colored cherry tomatoes, you can do that with one ingredient. I don't really like buying a little thing of herbs that I don't really use all of, especially on a camping trip. So what I've got here, I've got some red, some green, sorry, some red, some yellow, and some green, as I just said. Look at that guy. Oh, look at this. Little purpley boy. Yes, I did leave my welding gloves at home. Oh, look at that. Okay, that off to the side. That, oh, it's crispy as underneath. Friggin' look at that. Look at that. Some bacon. Cherry tomatoes. Oh. And because I love everything spicy, 
a little bit of sriracha, just a little twirl. Oh, sorry, and gratuitous B-roll. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I'm actually really hungry. Oh, God, this looks good. Okay. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Probably the best way to describe it is a deconstructed omelette like a deconstructed potato omelette. So it's got kind of an omelette flavor, flavour, um, but with this beautiful crispy potato underneath it. It's like a, the love child of a hash brown and an omelette. Yeah, that's prob probably about right. Doesn't go well with beer. It's breakfast food, so it probably shouldn't, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, it goes really well with beer. Oh, yeah, a little too well. Breakfast beers might be a thing now. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna smash this. Uh, thank you so much for your support this year. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh.